So another case of motion in two dimensions is motion in a circle. And the simplest type of this motion is called uniform circular motion, which occurs when the particle moving in a circle is moving at a constant speed. And so you may think that since the speed is constant, then there is no acceleration in uniform circular motion. Because, you know, acceleration changes the velocity. However, if you look at the velocity vectors along this particle's circular path, you notice that the velocity is always tangent to the circle. And so, even though the magnitude of velocity does not change because the speed is constant, the direction of the velocity vector is constantly changing. So there must be some acceleration that is only changing the velocity's direction, but not changing the velocity's magnitude. And so, if an acceleration vector is perpendicular to a velocity vector, then the acceleration only changes the velocity's direction, not the magnitude. Which means, at each point along the circle, if the velocity is tangent to the circle's path, the acceleration must be perpendicular to that velocity, which means it is always pointing to the center of the circular path. So in uniform circular motion, the only component of acceleration, which we call the centripetal acceleration, always points to the center of the circle. And we can find the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration using this formula. A equals V squared over A, where V is the speed of this particle, and A is the radius of its circular path. The period of a circular motion is the time it takes for the particle to go around the circle once. And so when the particle moves around the circle once, it moves a distance equal to the circle's circumference. And so we can write that the speed of the particle is the distance over time, or in other words, the circumference 2 pi r divided by the period which is you know, the time it takes for the particle to travel a circumference. So we can also have circular motion when the speed is not constant. And in this case, it's called non-uniform circular motion. And so we still have that component of acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, which always points to the center of the circle. And this component is still going to change only the direction of the velocity vector. However, we also need a component of acceleration that can change the velocity's magnitude. Also in non-uniform circular motion, the centripetal acceleration is not going to be constant. Because since it's given by this equation, and the speed is not constant in non-uniform circular motion, the centripetal acceleration magnitude is always going to be changing based on the speed at that point. And so, you know, back to the other component of acceleration, that's going to be called the tangential acceleration. So this component of acceleration is always parallel to the velocity vector. And this changes the velocity vector's magnitude. In other words, this is what is changing the speed. So the tangential acceleration is equal to the rate of change of the speed of the particle. So in summary, we have two components of acceleration when the speed is not constant. So any component of acceleration which is perpendicular to a velocity vector is only going to change the direction of the velocity. And any component of the acceleration which is parallel to the velocity vector is going to change the velocity's magnitude, not the direction. So since we have both of these components of acceleration, to find the overall acceleration, 
which is given by the Pythagorean theorem, or it's just the vector sum of these components, it no longer points to the center of the circle. It's going to point you know, somewhere like this. So in non-uniform circular motion, the acceleration does not always point to the center of the circle, since there are two components. So the last thing we're going to look at is relative velocity, which is something that occurs when we have two objects moving relative to each other. So imagine that you are driving in your car, and you pass a car which is in the lane next to you. So once you pass the car and you look back, it appears that the car that you passed is moving backwards away from you. So from your point of view, it looks like the car has a negative velocity. But in reality, both of the cars are moving forward. It's just you are moving at a faster speed than the other car. So that's the concept of relative velocity. Different observers can observe different velocities. So let's say we have this chain, which is moving at 3 meters per second to the right. And this passenger inside the chain is moving at 1 meters per second to the right inside the chain. So to another passenger inside the same chain, it looks like this guy is just moving at 1 meter per second, you know, which is what he's actually moving at. However, if another observer outside the chain, standing still, were to look at the guy, then he would appear to be moving at 4 meters per second due to the motion of the chain. So since the chain is also moving relative to this stationary observer, the guy looks like he's moving faster than he actually is. And if this guy was to look outside at this stationary observer, he would appear to be moving backwards at negative 4 meters per second relative to this guy.